What's going on guys? Roger here with QVO Tactical. In today's video, we have something a little different for you. Uh, kind of a new series that you're gonna start seeing here on the channel. You guys all know that I previously had a career in law enforcement. That career started almost 20 years ago back in 2003. During that time, the guns and gear that were used in policing were much different than they are now. Um, with that being said, I thought that a cool way to introduce this new Beretta A300 Ultima Patrol semi-automatic shotgun would be in this new series that we are calling Old School versus New School. So without further ado, let's check out how the new Beretta semi-automatic stacks up against my old school Remington 870 pump action shotgun. <laughs> As always, I like to tell you guys how I go about getting these products in for review. Um, you guys all know our good buddy Mikey over at Ventura Munitions. Um, I told him that I had some interest in shooting this video and he was able to put me in touch with the awesome people over at Arms Unlimited. Um, Arms Unlimited is a major law enforcement distributor for brands like Colt, Beretta, Remington, Magpul, and several other brands. They offer some of the most competitive online pricing on a lot of gear that we all want. Uh, Mikey let me know that they had received an order of the new Beretta Ultima Patrol semi-automatic shotguns and Arms Unlimited allowed me to purchase one at a discount in order to produce this video. If you're looking for some awesome gear at very competitive prices, be sure to check them out online at armsunlimited.com. Now, in regards to my Remington 870 PMAX, um, I purchased this back in 2005 from Discount Firearms here in Las Vegas. Um, I'm not even sure if they are still open. They were back on Highland over by the Strip. Um, since then though, I have Cerakoted in gray and I replaced the pistol grip stock, uh, the speed feed pistol grip stock that came with it. Um, I replaced that with the Magpul shotgun stock courtesy of our buddy Will Hutch over at Magpul. All right, guys, with that out of the way, let's get into the specs of this new offering from Beretta. The all-new A300 Ultima Patrol shotgun was something highly talked about at SHOT Show this year. It is a semi-automatic 12-gauge shotgun with enlarged controls, an enhanced loading port, and a thinner forend designed with both M-Lock and QD mounting points. The forend has a very aggressive texturing, allowing you to have maximum control during recoil. The shotgun features a 7 plus 1 extended magazine tube secured by a custom barrel clamp with additional M-Lock capability. Speaking of M-Lock, we mounted this weapon light from Valhalla Tactical featuring their omnidirectional activation switch. More on that in just a little bit. You're also gonna notice this enlarged side charging handle and bolt release, making it easy to run the action and load the shotgun quickly. The barrel length comes in at 19.1 inches and features the Beretta Mobile Choke. More on that choke later on in this video. The Ultima Patrol also features a short and compact stock with a 13 inch length of pull, which allows the shotgun to be better handled in confined spaces, something that definitely helps out with the maneuverability when clearing buildings. The shotgun also features ghost ring sights with a front fiber optic protected by a metal shroud. It also features a top Picatinny rail so that optics can be mounted like this Holosun 507C with the primary arms ACSS Vulcan reticle. This optic is easily mounted with the low profile American Defense manufacturing QD mount. This allows for the optic to sit a little higher higher than the irons, and with the quick detach lever, it can easily be taken off in the field if your optic fails on you. Lastly, the Beretta A300 Ultimate Patrol comes with a pre-cut female Velcro section that allows you to easily throw on 12 gauge Velcro placards for easy side saddle reloads, something that you're going to see in the range footage very shortly. Now guys, with an MSRP of $1,099 and competitive pricing online around $950, this is definitely a semi-automatic shotgun that has a lot of people excited as it's proving itself to be a very good value. All right, guys, with the specs out of the way now, let's get into the range footage. Um, like we always do, we recorded our first rounds through the gun. However, with this video being part of our old school versus new school series, we shot both guns side by side to start. All right, guys, out here on the range, like I said, in studio, doing the whole old school versus new school thing. Uh, first thing we wanna do, I have not shot this 870 in a while, so we are going to first uh, shoot it, the pump action Remington 870 uh, P model, and then I will shoot the Ultima right after, um, just to kind of get like a side by side comparison and see how they feel in regards to recoil. Uh, we're shooting a paper target out at 10 yards. Uh, we do have our special guest, Hazagawa. Ryan Hazagawa is here with us. So he will also get his first rounds as well as Gil. And kind of just give you guys our first impressions of what we think shooting them side by side. And then we'll get into some drills and stuff like that. So without further ado, first two rounds out of this are going to be some bird shot. And then the second two are going to be some buck shot. And uh, we'll go check the hits in between each. So here we go. Bird shot. Uh, Remington 870 P Max with the new uh, Magpul stock. Here we go. Now the buckshot, definitely a noticeable difference, but uh, not too crazy. Um, so let's go look over here. So 
So, I mean, as far as the bird shot, all these tiny little pellets, good to go. But as far as the buck shot go, actually, this is from yesterday's target, so we're good on there. But yeah, we look like we're pretty good. I mean, having a just ghost ring iron sights, keeping it all centered. Um, it's gonna be a little interesting with the buckshot though um, on the um, Beretta A300 Ultima Patrol because we have not zeroed this thing and uh, I wanna get the first rounds out before we zero. So here we go. Do this now. Like I said, first two rounds are gonna be some bird shot and then buckshot right after. Here we go. See, I went, to, I went to pump the action right now. I was like, oh, hey, I don't have to do that now. And now the buckshot. Dude, that's nice. Um, so it's crazy, because this gun's lighter. Yeah, definitely lighter, but um, just, I guess, the gas system, the way it's designed, being semi-auto, um, I don't feel as much of the oomph of the recoil with the buckshot as I did here. Um, I don't know, maybe just shooting this one first, I'm bracing myself more with this one, but this one does feel lighter and less recoil, and it was nice for once not having to uh, pump it. I don't think I've ever ran a semi-auto shotgun, so. Um, let's go check the hits on this, though. So you can definitely see where the wads went and stuff. And then here, the grouping's a little higher. So holding here, and that's where it's going. But at 10 yards with having the uh, Hollow Sun 507C with the ACSS, it's probably what, inch and a half above the bore, you think? Yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty much making sense. Looks like we're good windage-wise, we might dial it in. Same time, I gotta figure out what distance I wanna be at for the zero with a shotgun. Um, but yeah, we'll get a new zeroing target up here. We'll have uh, Ryan Hazegawa try his first shots and see what he thinks. But um, guys, I'm liking it. First four rounds out of the uh, semi-auto shotgun. Um, it's cool to see a semi-auto shotgun for patrol priced at sub 1,000 bucks. But yeah, we'll get uh, Hazegawa up here now and have him, and have him try it out. All right, we got the man himself, Ryan Hazagawa, making his QVO range review debut. Appreciate you coming out, dog. Dude, I appreciate you having me. Thanks for letting me shoot all your ammo. For sure. Happy 30th birthday. Thanks, dude. Make dude. sure you guys drop a comment down below saying happy dirty 30 to, to Hazagawa over here. Okay, we have, first up, like I said before, 870p max, my old school pump action shotgun from my policing days. Uh, first two rounds, bird shot, second two, buck shot, and let's do the same thing with the uh, Beretta Ultima. Let's do it. Buckshot. So it is, yeah, from the side it's noticeably different. Yeah, feels like a, feels like an 870. <laughs> it feels like, you know, no recoil action on that at all. So it's just making sure to run the pump with a full stroke on it and make sure that I get that shell out. But yeah, that's about what I remember 12 gauge pump feeling like. So I guess now we're gonna. Now the new hotness. The A300. So when I showed this on Instagram, guys, Ryan immediately DM me. He's like, yo, I want to shoot that. So yeah, looking at this at shot, I was like, I was handling it. I was amazed at how light this thing was. Right. So I was like, oh, Roger got one. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go take I'm gonna go play with it. Alright. Oh, did you need to check the zero or anything like that at all? Nah, we're good. Go ahead. Cool. We'll go check it after. And now we're on our buck. So what do you think? That's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely like, it's still, it still snaps like a 12 gauge, but you definitely kind of feel that bolt riding a little bit more. It doesn't quite go all into your cheek. It like catches a little bit of that before it comes all the way back. So that's cool, man. I can definitely see how you could be running this at speed with everything. So I'm excited to play around with it a little bit more. Yeah, I'm really impressed, like you said, how light it is, yeah. but how light it is compared to like, I felt like there should be more recoil than the 870, but it's like the same, if not less. Yeah, they're pretty comparable. So that bolt system is real cool. All right, let's go look at the hits. Where are you holding on the- uh, holding like right here. Gotcha, so, so the high stuff's definitely gonna be the, uh, the um, Beretta with the optic I, I mounted so, up yeah. higher. Yeah, so maybe just dial it down a little bit more. And just I don't know, yeah, I, we'll put out a target and see like where a nice tight group is just with the uh, semi-auto, mm -hmm. but I mean, honestly, man, like that's that's where I'm gonna want that if I had to use it in a, in a self-defense situation. Right, right. So cool, sure. we'll get another target up and we'll have uh, Gil run it now. 
All right, we got Gil up now. He is going to uh, get his first shots on both the 870 and the uh, A300 Ultima Patrol. Uh, quick note here though, you've never shot a 12 gauge shotgun. Yeah, never, so this is my first time, so I'm pretty stoked. A lot of firsts for you on the channel, I dig it. I know, I'm learning a lot, so it's good. All right, so we set the uh, 12 gauge up for you, the 870 uh, pump action. So like I said, you're just gonna rack one round in. Uh, first two shots will be bird shot, so, and the next one will be, the next two will be buck shot. You should, you should feel a noticeable difference. Okay. All right, man, Cool. go for it. You can feel it on the end on those two. Yeah, man, that's nice. Feels, feels fun. Never shot them before, so got a lot of kick on the shoulder, you know, but it's fun. <laughs> well, now we're going to spoil it with the semi auto. So just rack that thing one time, and it's pretty much going to cycle like a normal rifle. Okay. Oh, yeah. How light that thing is crazy, man. That thing's a lot of fun. Super light to pick it up and move around with it. I know we keep talking about how you want to buy everything and I keep telling you don't, but honestly, man, this is probably one of the things you should buy. Yeah. Let's go check the hits. Yeah, guys, so overall, same thing. Uh, everything's pretty much center. Nothing's really leaving the white paper. Um, so, I mean, honestly, obviously the irons are gonna be on, but as far as having the optic, I kind of just uh, lined it up with sitting on top of the, um, fiber optic front sight of the Beretta shotgun, but it's looking pretty good. We'll uh, put a new target up and kind of get a dialed in zero with some buckshot, make sure we're on point. But other than that, good stuff. So four rounds in, what do you think? I'm getting that Beretta. <laughs> uh, I'm, I can actually get one in California, so I might order one. Oh, nice. Now that our first rounds are out of the way, I wanted to make sure that my optic was zeroed with the shotgun. All right, guys, I want to get my uh, Hollow Sun 507C with Primary Arms ACSS. Get this red dot zeroed uh, for this shotgun. Uh, everything I've been reading on the internet says people zero at 10, people zero at 15, some people zero at 30. Uh, I'm going to go with 20 yard zero, and then later that's probably going to change because we are going to shoot some rifled slugs at 50, and I'll probably leave that set because if I'm zeroed at 50 with a rifled slug, then I just know I need to hold um, a little high if I'm doing close range stuff. Anyway, I do want to see how the buckshot uh, patterns on a paper target at 20 yards. So we're 20 yards out, we're going to shoot this, and then we'll go down to take a look. Normally we would have my phone down there recording, but with a 20 yard uh, distance, I'm not sure how the spread's gonna be with the buckshot, so I didn't wanna put it on my iPhone down there. Um, we'll shoot this first one. If the spreading's not too bad, then we'll put the phone up for the next shot. But anyway, here we go, 20 yards out, and see how this 12 gauge buckshot patterns with the uh, Beretta A300 Ultima Patrol. All right, let's walk down, check out the hits. All right, so one, two, three. Uh, I wanna say it's eight shot uh, pellet. So not sure if this is from previous before, got some here and here, but I'm gonna go with this moving us here. We need to come down and left. Um, if we were to center it off of this guy, we'd say one, two, three, four. So four inches down and one, two, three, three inches left. So four inches down, three inches left. We'll make our adjustments and then we'll shoot another group. All right, guys, so I made my adjustments. We're gonna take another shot, go look at the grouping at 20 yards, and then uh, we'll also bring the target in here soon, like at five to 10 yards, so you guys can see, you know, a, a closer grouped pattern. But 20 yards out, made our adjustments, here we go. Clear here, let's go down and take a look. All right, so clearly our elevation is good, or getting better. We're moving closer down to where we should be. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven out of the eight pellets. Uh, however, now we're super far left. So maybe I'll move it back, right? Maybe it didn't need to adjust. So maybe that original group was like here and here. Yeah. yeah. So I'll make the adjustments according to this now. Go back to where we were at before uh, and bring it down a little bit more so that this grouping is more down here. And then uh, go back right, like I said, and we'll see where we're at. All right, guys, third shot. Here we go, 20 yards out. I think I was a little left on that one, but we'll see out here. Got one high guy there. And on that three R, I think. Which one? Three R. Right here. Ah. 
so I mean the spreads like this but it's pretty much overall center you got all the triangle ones so one two three four five six seven again seven out of the eight and then eight right there Did you already this one? which one is it right here yeah that's true one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, all eight, eight cool. Yeah, yeah. So all eight are there, and we're looking at, let's connect the dots. <laughs> it's like an arrow. Um, I don't know, ideally what, you think we'd want to move that down a little bit low, uh, lower right? You said you were feeling like you were a little low. Oh, you know what, yeah, I was, I was shooting, I, I think I was holding like right here. Yeah. So it might be good where it's at. Pretty good, I mean. It's supposed to spread. So. <laughs> but yeah, let's bring it in to like 10 yards now and just see a nice tighter group. All right, guys, so I'm pretty happy with that zero considering I was holding a little left and it's uh, just left of center as far as the grouping goes. Brought the target in to about 10 yards out now. We're gonna shoot it and see a nice tighter group with these pellets uh, and then we will get on to the range day. So here we go, 10 yards out, 12 gauge buckshot. That felt good. Let's go take a look at these hits now. Do some squares now. So one, one, two, three, four, five, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Where are you at, number eight? It's probably in there with that. So I think we need to move just a little bit left as far as windage goes, but elevation, I'm happy with that. Yeah. So yeah, I'll move a little bit left guys and then we're good. Now that we were happy with our zero, we got started on running some drills. Um, I thought that a good way to bring you guys this review would be to shoot different drills side by side with the Remington 870 pump action versus the Beretta Ultima Patrol semi-automatic. All right, guys, so like I said in studio, we're gonna run a bunch of different drills with the old school 870 P-Max pump action versus the new school uh, A300 Beretta Ultima Patrol. Uh, this drill, if you look out here for me, Gil, we have uh, six plates, a little six inch rounds uh, that'll fall off when they get shot, a rubber dummy, and then a large C-zone steel at about 20 yards, 15, 20 yards away from me. Drill's gonna go, you can shoot any order you want as long as that last C-zone steel is the last one you hit. So on the buzzer, I'll come up, engage, one, two, three, four, five, six, Boom, seven, I'm gonna end up having to do a combat load into the action and then come back up to finish it on that last target. Both guns are gonna be staged with seven rounds. That way you're forced to take your last shot off of a combat load. Um, and yeah, we'll see what the best times are between the three of us. And I mean, obviously I think the semi is gonna win because you're not having to pump it, but I think we can really run this and get a very similar time if we're uh, running the action between the transition on each shot. All right, here we go, stand by. Come on, baby. Ugh. Eight shots, total time of 10.76. First shot was a .97, so that was cool. I was able to get up on target. Um, best split was a 7.5. So time to beat, boys. It's gonna be a 10.76. All right, Ryan is up now. He is going to run the drill on the 870 P-Max. Uh, time to beat, 1076, go for it, bud. So you had to do two combat loads. I was like, when I was doing the transition, I think I landed a little far, but I broke it anyway, because I was like, oh, maybe I'll just still be in <laughs> What do we got time-wise? 1796. 1796. Four, five, six. Let's see here. Best split was. 0.87 is my best split there, but that might also have been the one that I missed. So that's gotcha. <laughs> So 1796? 1796, yep. All right, Gil, 1796, that's all you gotta beat. Jesus. 
Oh, now you gotta do three combat loads. So reload, there you go. What you just practiced. There you go, there you go. Nice. Wait, so I keep reloading? No, you can, but go ahead. There you go, combat load. Get some practice in on the combat load. There you go, good stuff. Nice, now the rubber dummy. Nice, and now the steel. Pressure, pressure. Oh, you missed, go again. No way. <laughs> There you go. Bro, hey, good working through it though. So you've never done combat loads for second time shooting a shotgun ever and you work through it. What was the time though? Who knows, 41.4. <laughs> hey man. Hey guys in the comments, take it easy on me, right? <laughs> it's fun though, right? Yeah, that was really fun actually. That's yeah. probably one of the funnest ranges I had so far. Nice. All right, guys, now it's time to run the same drill with the Beretta A300 Ultima Patrol Semi-Auto. Uh, yeah, 1076 was the time to beat. I feel like we're going to beat it with this, guys. So 1076, that's the time. Here we go. Stand by. Come on. 927. So definitely faster, but not that much faster. Sure. I mean, some people in the comments are gonna be like, yo, a whole second in a gunfight? Yeah. I mean, like a second and a half. So yeah, um, definitely faster than semi auto. Obviously, not having to do the run the pump action. But um, this, I will say, you know what, what felt, fast, uh, felt faster to me was this is way lighter. Yeah. So like transitioning between targets was super easy. Like I actually, when I went to pull over here to the steel, I overshot it. So How about um, the manipulation on the reload too. Like it's easier to like kind of like work in, right? Yeah, since it's lighter. Yeah. Exactly. And like getting this is the first time for me doing combat loads on a semi-auto. Um, coming in here, like I've I've watched people go over and then hit this and slide forward, but I've also watched people go over and then as they hit the release, they end up hitting the bolt or the uh, charging handle, sorry, and it like causes a malfunction. So I always came under with my other shotgun, it's just easier for me to come here and throw it in. But here, I can come under, throw it in, hit this, and slide forward onto the forend, and that's what I prefer. So, but uh, Ryan, you're gonna be up. 927 clean, it's time to be, bro. All right, we got Ryan up now with the uh, semi-auto Beretta A300 Ultima. 927, that's time to beat, bro. Let's do it. On you. What happened? Did you not load? I guess I, I, guess I did guess right. That's still fast though. That's still, what was the time? 1118. 1118 with two combat loads? Load. I'll Extra take that. Load. I'm, I want to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gil, you're up. Semi-auto time, Beretta A300 Ultima Patrol. There you go. Oh, come on. What was the time? 2.94. Better than the last one. How though. much? 22.94. Yep. Hey man, you're getting all the combat load practicing you need. Yeah. Still learning. All right, guys, we can't let Gil get all of the fun in with the combat loads. So we're gonna run a drill now that is uh, combat load focused. Uh, we're gonna shoot three of those uh, little six inch circle steel targets. We have one round loaded into the chamber, empty tube, so the gun is going to go to bolt lock with the uh, action open. We'll combat load another round in, shoot the second target, it'll open again, combat load the third one, and then shoot the last target. So uh, three rounds fired, two combat loads for time. We'll see how we do. Here we go, stand by. Come on. Total time, 713. So for reloads, we're looking at, uh, first split was a 352, and the second was a 256. So I got a second faster uh, with my second combat load. So again, total time to beat, guys, is going to be 713. How's it going? Well, you're up next. Let's do it. All right, how's it going? What's up next? Go for it, bud. Let's do it. Total time. Seven five eight. Seven five eight. Right, with the, let's see what my 
my splits are reloads. First shot at 187, or sorry, 87. Second shot at 357 is my split. 314 is my split for the second reload. So. I can't remember what mine was. Was mine 719 or 7? I don't remember, it was seven something, I think, right? We'll have to look, we'll have to look back. All right, Gil, so you gotta beat, Gil, if you beat seven and a half seconds, you win. All right, we got Gil up next, go for it, bud. So, 10.62? 10.62, that is not under seven. No. Good job though. Hey, a lot better. All right, let's try it now with the pump action. All right guys, so of course we have to run the same drill now with the pump action 870. Uh, we went back and looked at it, so my time was a 713, so I'm gonna try to get as close as I can to the uh, semi-auto Beretta time of 713. Here we go, stand by. Come on. Ninety-seven, so almost two seconds slower. Um, just you guys notice, like my ear pro, it's like grabbing on the stock is like, Egh! but uh, eight ninety-seven split times for those four seconds and four within three ninety-eight. So four oh seven, three ninety-eight. So I think I got like a two fifty-six on the other one. So definitely uh, a lot slower to bring the action back, put one in, it and go forward. Um, I feel like with a little more practice, I could probably get that to be like a one second difference versus two second. But I'm gonna have Ryan and Gil try it out and see what they do. Smooth. Sheesh. Six five six. So six five six is six, faster five, than six. the semi auto seven thirteen. Six five six. My first split was three oh one. Second split two seven two. So I guess that means you get the Remington, I get the Beretta. Shit. <laughs> All right, Gil. Six fifty six is the time to beat, bro. <laughs> Run, run it back. Run it back. I'm so used to running. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that's probably not better than a 656. De well, definitely not. 19.77. <laughs> Still getting used to it. So over here talking, we were kind of going over why the 656 time came from the pump action versus the uh, longer time with the uh, semi-auto. But yeah, we were, you were saying about having to run the action kind of naturally brings you into the placement for the combat yeah. load. I mean, there's two things with it. First, like I've shot more on pump action H 870s before, so I think that there's some like familiarity there. But I also think that after I after I break that shot and then I'm pulling back, this motion is already kind of ingrained that I'm kind of coming back to here. So when I go for the load, it's all kind of placed there already, whereas with the semi-auto, I'm already up kind of right here, right? And then I have to remember to come back and slide my hand in, and this texture is also not the most fun thing to run your hand back on. <laughs> but you have to like kind of come back to there and then remember to do that. I'm sure I could get faster on the semi-auto if I practice on it, but it's interesting that the muscle cues for the 870 are already naturally to kind of come back on it to like get that load in, so. Interesting, real interesting. Nice. So definitely a few things to talk about with these drills, guys. Um, I'm always gonna have a special place for my Remington 870 pump action. This gun has been with me for a very long time and has always been a reliable workhorse. With advances in technology though, I can definitely say that if I were back on patrol, I'd much more prefer this Beretta A300 Ultima Patrol. I remember an old stigma back in the day when some automatic shotguns were first hitting the market about them being finicky or unreliable. Um, I think that we could definitely agree that quality has improved over the last 20 years, and I'm happy to report that we did not experience any malfunctions while out on the range with the Ultima Patrol. So being able to have a lighter shotgun without having to manually cycle the action and being able to mount an optic right out of the box is something I can really appreciate. Um, I also remember living on a patrol officer's salary, so seeing a semi-automatic shotgun for under $1,000 is pretty great as well. Now guys, I'm not an expert at all when it comes to shotguns. Um, I say this because if you remember earlier, I talked about the mobile choke that comes pre-installed in this Beretta Ultima Patrol.
I bring this up because while on the range, we were shooting some 12 gauge rifled slugs. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get a consistent zero that I was happy with in regards to the slugs. The best I was able to do was like a six to eight inch group at 25 yards. Um, after leaving the range though, I did some research in regards to that mobile choke that is pre-installed in the Beretta Ultima Patrol. Um, as you can see from this photo, the Beretta choke is an improved cylinder choke as designated by the IC. This means that you are able to use rifled slugs with this choke. I am not certain as to why we were not able to get a good grouping with the slugs, and it's something that I'm gonna have to look further into. Uh, if any of you guys down below in the comment section have some good advice about that, please let me know. Uh, I definitely wanna check it out. We were using the Sterling Tornado rifled slugs. Um, I do remember back in the day being able to get very accurate shots with rifled slugs uh, using a 50 yard zero. All right guys, we played around with a bunch of slugs and we got the best zero we think we're gonna get with the slugs. Kinda inconsistent, but we have probably like a six inch spread on some steel. Uh, but now I'm going to shoot the buckshot at about 15 yards. That's why I wanna have this gun set up for a home defense. Um, so I'm gonna zero my primary arms, uh, ACSS Vulcan reticle inside the Hollow Sun 507C and uh, off of the ADM QD mount. So, I mean, we're talking maybe, maybe like an inch, inch and a half uh, height over bore. But again, we'll see where this uh, pellet shot grouping is from this uh, 12 gauge buck shot. And then I think we're gonna be pretty much dead on where I want it. So one round, target at 15 yards on paper. Here we go. I don't recommend doing it like this. It's not enjoyable. <laughs> right, Hasegawa? <laughs> My face hurts. <laughs> but now we go look at the uh, shell spread or the uh, pellet spread. I mean, 15 yards out, probably six to seven inches right here, maybe eight. But I'm happy with that if I had to use it in a home defense situation. Um, but yeah, this thing was awesome, man. I appreciate you coming out, dog. Thanks for having me, bro. So um, we'll do the whole closing stuff in studio and all, but uh, Hazagawa before, because you won't be there for that portion. Your final thoughts, Beretta A300 Ultima Patrol, gonna buy it or not? Yeah, I think I'm gonna try and track one down. It's super cool. Um, for having shot the 1301 before, I actually wanna shoot them side by side to see really what I'm sacrificing from getting that gun versus the A300, but for the price, like, that's crazy, man. Like, I remember a lot of Benelli's and stuff like that, they're charging like, you know, double or triple for doing more or less the same thing. Yeah, so. I'm seeing these for about $950 online, and then a 1301 goes for what, like 1400 bucks? Like, it's a little over a grand, so it's somewhere in that, yeah, like 13, 14 range, I wanna say, depending on the package and stuff like that. But the fact that you can get something like this for under a grand, it's like crazy, dude, and it's super smooth for, you know, being some of their budget, you know, right? shock. I like things that are just ready to go out of the box. Um, this is one of those things. I'll I'll talk about it in studio and also on QVOreviews.com where we kind of break down all the different parts we put onto this thing. But for the most part, guys, everything on here um, is from Beretta except for like the side saddles and stuff. But uh, like, like you saw in studio, it comes with that Velcro attachment to make it easy for you to buy stuff on Amazon to, to make work with this setup. So yeah. uh, I really dig the QD points, man. That's something yeah. you don't see on shotguns. You normally see like um, the little like swivels Swivel that you got to put a little like yeah. thin paracord through. I'm not a fan of that stuff. Yeah, I like QD. Yeah. So, but yeah, uh, there you go. How's it going? approved. Now, let's go over a couple of things in regards to how I have the shotgun set up compared to my old school 870. Uh, with this shotgun having the M-Lock rail section, I was able to mount this Valhalla Tactical light setup. Um, in this footage here, you're gonna see how much more advantageous it is to run a newer light technology like this versus my older Surefire shotgun forend. I actually switched this bulb out back in the early 2000s from an incandescent one to an LED one. Um, and it's also crazy to think about how we all thought this was great illumination back in the day. Surefire, among several other companies like Valhalla tactical have brought light technology is so much further in the last few years. Um, additionally, this does have their omnidirectional switch. Um, guys, this thing is awesome. You might have seen a previous video where I was showing how you can easily engage it from any direction and it just activates the light. And if you press it all the way, it'll go into the constant feature. Um, I do have this mounted on the left side of the shotgun. That way my support hand thumb is able to activate it when needed. All right, now I do wanna go over some things that I know are gonna help you guys out if you pick this shotgun up. Um, the first thing is going to be the rear QD mount built into the stock. Uh, when I first went to install my QD mount for my sling, I noticed that the mount was easily being pulled out with very little force. Um, I've seen other videos online where people are cutting out the material around the QD insert on the stock in order to allow the QD swivel to completely be inserted. Um, this is one method, however, I recommend just grabbing the Allen key and then unthread the insert very slightly. You only need like less than half of a thread to come 
out. Um, this is going to allow your QD swivel from your sling to insert fully, making your two-point sling very secure. Now, since we're talking about slings, I'm rocking my Flatline Fiber Company two-point padded sling in wolf gray with this shotgun. Uh, like I said earlier in the video, I do appreciate that Beretta incorporated QD mounts into the shotgun. I, however, do wish that they would have placed the rear mounting position in a different place or similar to the Magpul stock where you can simply thread your sling through. With the mounting position on the bottom edge of the stock, it doesn't allow the shotgun to easily lay down inwards towards your body when transitioning to your handgun. Um, this is honestly like my only gripe about the shotgun. We all had a great time with it on the range and it performed very well. Um, I think that if you're in the market for a semi-automatic shotgun, this is definitely one to take a look at, uh, especially for the value guys. Shooting this one has definitely piqued my interest in purchasing the Beretta 1301 tactical shotgun now. Um, from everyone that I've spoken to, they say that the 1301 is even better than the A300 Ultimate Patrol, but it does come with a price point of four to $500 more. Um, I definitely think down the road, you're gonna see one of those on the channel and we're gonna let you guys know if it's worth the additional money. If you guys are curious about the rear side saddle that I have installed, um, it's just a generic cloth one that I purchased on Amazon. After installing it, I cut a small hole down the seam in order for the QD swivel to have clearance to mount. Additionally, with the sling installed, it keeps the side saddle in place. It doesn't allow it to slide on the stock. Um, I like this specific side saddle because it has a spot for two additional rounds on the inside near your cheek weld. This allows me to have two rifled slugs in a separate position, so it's easy to designate which ones are the rifled slugs. All of this stuff that we have used in the video, guys, can be found with links on our blog style website, qvoreviews.com. Well guys, that's gonna wrap up this old school versus new school shotgun video. If you guys like this style of video, please let me know down below in the comments. I do have another one coming up where we're gonna run my old school TRP Operator 1911 that I carried on duty uh, versus a more modern setup like the Staccato P with an optic. Again, we wanna thank Arms Unlimited right here in Las Vegas, Nevada for helping us produce this video. Also, big shout out to Ryan Hasegawa for coming out to the range and shooting with us all the way from California. Guys, if you like the video, make sure to give us a thumbs up down below because it does help out the channel. Consider subscribing as well if you're new here because we we post new videos every week. Uh, make sure to also check us out on Utreon and Rumble as we post videos there as well. Also, big shout out to the Patreon squad. You guys are definitely a huge support with all of our videos. As always, guys, we appreciate you watching and we'll see you in the next one.